I'm Candace Young, and I'm a manager of Data Security Standards at the PCI Council. I'm here to talk to you today a little bit about the customized approach in compensated controls as it relates to PCI DSS version 4.0. This is Questions with the Council. Our first question comes from a merchant and participating organization. The question is, we are not sure if the customized approach is right for our organization. What considerations are there when taking this approach? There are a few considerations to, to make when choosing the customized approach to meet any PCI DSS version 4 requirement. The first for consideration is, when is your assessment? How long do you have in advance to prepare all of the documentation and the testing required for the customized approach? Another consideration would be, how many resources do you have available to help with the designing, implementation, and the confirmation of the efficacy of the customized approach? You need to maintain these controls for long-term efficiency. Do you have the resources in place to support that? And the last consideration would be, what is your risk management strategy in your organization? Is it robust? Can it be a foundation to help support any sort of technological advances you may want to include in this customized approach. So those are some considerations you should really have a discussion about in your organization before considering the customized approach. This next question comes from a QSA. Please clarify in which situation a compensated control can be used and in which situations a customized approach would be needed. Hmm. A customized approach is not needed. It is a choice that an entity can make if the customized approach offers more flexibility to meet a requirement than, say, the defined approach would. An example of this would be in a large organization when they're using cutting-edge technology to meet security demands of the organization. On the other hand, compensated controls are used when the defined approach is in place and there is a legitimate business or technical constraint preventing them from meeting the complete requirement. An example of this would be, let's say if an organization employs legacy systems perhaps, and there is a reason why they cannot update those systems appropriately. They would employ a compensated control to mitigate the risk of not updating that system appropriately. This question comes from a QSA. Can someone expand upon the rules for compensated controls as far as providing a legitimate, documented technical or business constraint? Does it depend on the opinion of the assessor to define legitimacy? The QSA is responsible for determining whether the compensating control sufficiently mitigates the risk associated with not meeting the requirement as explicitly stated. Whether the compensated control sufficiently fills that gap that the constraint leaves on the requirement. The QSA must agree with whether the constraint is legitimate, but it's not the responsibility to validate the legitimacy of the constraint. The QSA's responsibility is to validate the legitimacy of the control that's in place and determine whether that control sufficiently mitigates the risk and whether it sufficiently provides assurance that the security is maintained through meeting that requirement with the addition of the compensating control. And the final question, also comes from a QSA. For customized approach, when you say two separate QSAs, one to support the entity's design and test the customized control, and a different QSA to assess the control, can this be two QSAs from the same QSA company? Or do you mean QSAs from two different QSA companies? So what I think this question is asking is, if an organization receives support from an individual qualified security assessor to help design and implement the customized approach, can that be the same individual assessor that also evaluates the effectiveness of that control? And can those assessors be from the same company? I'd like to point out first that if an entity does need an assessor to help design and implement the customized approach, they may not be the ideal candidate for the customized approach because what the customized approach includes is designing, implementing, as well as the maintenance of the ongoing effectiveness of those customized controls. And resources would be required throughout the year to help support that effort. So if you do need support to design and implement, you may want to reconsider the use of the customized approach long-term for your organization. But to answer this question, 
as defined in the QSA qualification requirements. The assessor that defines and implements controls cannot be the same individual assessor that also assesses the effectiveness of a control. Can they be from the same QSA company? It's possible. They just need to make sure that the independence rules are maintained and they stay distinctly separate from the assessment. For more about the customized approach in compensated controls, visit our website for our blog post series on this very topic. Thanks so much to all of our stakeholders for submitting these great questions.